<laughs> do you like 80s television? Of course you do. Do you like helicopters? Of course you do. Do you like men serenading eagles by the waterfront while playing cello? Yes. Yes, you do. If you'd like to hear more about helicopters and cellos, please be sure and tune in to Champa and Klein the Airwolf Years every week on your favorite podcast service. Join hosts Greg and Dave as they discuss every single episode of the classic 1980s television series Airwolf. Be sure and subscribe today. It's a current genetic year, and podcast hosts Chris, JL, and Sabrina are traveling in a spaceship borrowed from Elon Musk through an anomaly in space in search of their missing fourth host, Laura. They are traveling between different versions of Earth, inspired by pop culture, beamed through radio, TV, and internet waves from the original home planet Earth, now dubbed Earth X. To help them on their journey, the ship is equipped with three AIs. A navigation AI voiced by Sylvester Stallone, a maintenance AI voiced by Christopher Walken, and a kitchen AI voiced by Brooder. Sounds complicated? Sounds convoluted? Sounds awesome? It all slightly is. Join them on their journey as they learn pop culture history both true and made up. It's Podcast 42. Chip, put yourself on autopilot. Uh, okay. Uh, sure, I'll do all the work then. Uh, this is my human brain, but no worries. I'm just an AI. I don't have a life. Yeah, uh, technically you, you don't. Did you have plans for this afternoon or something? Maybe you were thinking about making Rambo 12 later, perhaps? Uh-huh, very funny. Uh, maybe I would plan a spa day. Listen, the new beers have arrived on board, and I want to check them out. They are... Let's see here. I've got from Urban South a Nectar Cream Snowball Juice. Mmm, it's a hazy, juicy IPA. And Single Cut Beer Smiths. Does anybody remember laughter? Ooh, another IPA. Should have uh, never put me in charge of ordering all those. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to hurry with those, JL. I think the computer's going to update in three and a half hours. And... <laughs> That only gives us 20 minutes away from our first stop. I know, I know, I know. And this one's already got sediment in it. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> Sabrina should have rolled the beers. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Sabrina? Well, the ship gave her a new job, so she is strutting around here somewhere. Or lost down one of the endless hallways that lead nowhere. <laughs> now entering the bridge, First Lieutenant Mourner Sabrina. Mm. Warner. Were you lost? Yes, but that's not important. Guess what? You are a professional mourner. Yes! How did you know? The ship told us. But what does that mean? All right, it's really simple. If anyone dies, I go to the funeral and cry for them. And sometimes I get to make speeches. Eulogies. No, no. Who's that? Is he taking my new job? Who is who? Eulogy. It's not a who. It's what the speeches are called at funerals. Well, that's dumb. Why aren't they just called speeches? Or, like, funeral speeches? Honestly, I don't know. Good point. So, there are only three of us on this ship. Right. One, two, three. Which means that you would be mourning for either JL or myself. And I would do my best fake crying and chest heaving that you ever saw. I am a professional, you know. I'll take your word for it since I might be dead and can't witness it firsthand. <laughs> it would probably be you, Chris. I mean, you are older. Well, considering I'm the captain and I give the orders, it might be you, JL. I might just send you down to some strange planet to scout... And boom, you're cut in half by a giant man-eating cockroach. You would, too. Well, I can't send myself. And I can't send our only mourner. Oh, that is very true. It makes perfect sense. You know, I would quit, but I have nowhere to go. True. 
you know, maybe I'll bring this snowball juice with me and I'll take it into the giant cockroach and I can drink and discuss ways of beheading your Funko collection. Oh, you would, you bastard. You are now in the atmosphere of the planet Tiberius. Population 5 million and losing people by the minute. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, what the hell does that mean? Should we turn around? I don't like the sounds of that. Oh, I think this planet is going to need my services. I'm going to be rich. Who wants me to buy them a car? I don't think anyone needs a car in space. You know, you say that now, but the offer will not be on the table for long. Ship, what do we know about this planet? Well... I know some things, but apparently you know nothing, or you wouldn't be asking. So what we know about the place, this planet, is that you know nothing. Great. A bipolar AI. Here, let me help. It's all in the phrasing. Ship, what do you know about the planet Tiberius? Oh, a great deal. Let me lay some knowledge down for you to soak in those spongy gray matter cells inside those craniums. The planet Tiberius receives a signal from Earth-X of only old Star Trek episodes. Their culture is based on the show and the movies. There are 10 TV shows and 13 films that are constantly being looped on all of the media devices. The people of this planet have based all of their beliefs on their franchise. So, uh, anything else important that we should know? Yes, they don't believe they live on a planet. They think they live on a spaceship, much like the Enterprise. The Enterprise is a famous and beloved spaceship from that fandom. Star Trek was created by Gene Roddenberry. Roddenberry was a freelance writer. He created his first television series, The Lieutenant, in 1964, before creating Star Trek in 1966. The show would only last three seasons. Would you like me to name all the different Star Trek shows and movies? Absolutely not. I would kind of like to hear about them. I was a big Star Trek fan. Oh, great. Okay, so first it was Star Trek, the original series, although it wasn't called the original series until it was not. Then we had Star Trek, the animated series. Then we had Star Trek, the next generation. We actually know all this. There are a lot of Star Treks. After that, it was Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. These were set in the same timeline as Next Generation. Ship, we don't want a list. How do we stop it? Alexa, cancel. Next up was the shows Enterprise and Discovery. These were not as popular as their previous counterparts. Maybe there's like a volume button. We could turn it down until it's done. Ah, uh, yes, right here. I'll just pot it down. Short tracks and Picard followed those, although you can only catch them on streaming services. Well, at least we have an idea of what the culture is like on the planet. It's literally a planet full of Trekkies. Should we cosplay for when we land? I want to cosplay. I'm not cosplaying, but feel free. I'm going to wear my comfortable shoes. I'm not cosplaying either. Although, technically, I would be Sulu and wearing a gold shirt if I did. I would also be wearing a gold shirt, but I have to wear it a little looser than Kirk did. I, I don't own a girdle. Maybe you should look into investing in one. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'll just avoid wearing stripes and stick to solid colors. I'm totally cosplaying as Spock. I need to fashion some pointy ears out of hot glue and chicken wire. That sounds painful. It's not. I have a master's in chicken wire from NYCU. You're a chicken wire master? Yes. Did you not see me compete on the Spike TV show, Chicken Wire Masters? I watched that. Really? I was bored one day, and it was in my recommended viewing section on Hulu. It was a really hard competition. I had to make a life-size Statue of Liberty in two hours. Prepare for landing. Crap! I wanted to have a quick beer. Just grab a highlight on your way off the ship. Like I wasn't going to do that anyways. (laughs) 
Look at this place. It looks pretty normal. Except everyone is wearing Star Trek uniforms. <laughs> Good thing I dressed up. Except you still kind of stick out because everyone's wearing a red shirt and you're wearing a blue shirt. But my chicken wire spot ears are on point. <laughs> See what I did there? I'm trying Wait, not to. Yeah, the, I got it. No, I, I see. I see. <laughs> there are a hell of a lot of red shirts on this planet. Like, they are everywhere. Well, the red shirts were the security officers and engineers. This planet seems like they need a lot of them. But just what happened to the red shirts in Star Trek? Hmm? Oh, I know. They just kind of hung out. And then every once in a while, they got to go on adventures with Kirk, Spock, Bones, and Scotty. That is true. They would all beam down to some mysterious planet with some unknown race of creatures who were usually wearing face paint. That wasn't face paint, per se. That was special effects of the 1960s on a television budget. I did like the black and white cookie guy. All right. Before we get off topic too much, Sabrina. Yes? Do you remember who usually got beamed back to the ship when they were done on their adventures? Yes. Kirk, Spock, Bones, and Scotty. Right. 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 Oh, God. This is a planet of cannon fodder. <laughs> Hello, who are you? Oh, uh, hi. My name is Chris. This is JL. And this is Sabrina. Sabrina, are you the new science officer? Yes. Yes, I am. No. No, she is not. Yes! Yes, I am! No, no, she is not. She definitely is. Take us to your leader. JL, what are you doing? Aren't we here to find Laura? That would be the best place to start, don't you think? Depends. Is she hangry? Who are these people? Hey, is that the new science officer? Great. There are more of them. Yes. Yes, it is. It's not. It's not. Yes, I am. No, no, she is not. She most certainly is. Are you concerned with finding Laura? Or are you concerned with stirring up trouble? Maybe. A little both. Your leader, please. We are in search of a very sleepy woman. So, Counselor Deanna Troy? Not quite. She would have been a visitor to this planet, traveling in a ship that looked like ours. That is a weird-looking ship. Where are the warp engines? Where is the radar dish? Does it make cool whooshing noises when it flies off screen? How is one to dramatically react to a photon beam hitting the hull in this? It's way too small. That's what she said. Yeah, it's a little different. We did, however, steal a lot of the design from the Orville. Who's Orville? Orville's going to be mad when he finds out. It's not a who. It's a show that borrows heavily from Star Trek. Chris, they are not going to know what the Orville is. Besides, you wouldn't watch that show if Norm MacDonald wasn't on it. Yeah, that's true. Now, my red-shirted friends, why don't you take us to your leader? No, wait. Take us to your captain. See, that was more Star Trekky. Well, that's going to be a little hard. Yeah, it's complicated right now. Like a Facebook relationship status? What's so complicated about it? Is Avril Lavigne your captain? That was, that was better than mine. Considering I haven't had a line in almost five minutes, I agree. What? Are you counting? Yes. Shh, look, over there, here comes another red shirt. What is going on here? <laughs> He's from the countryside of the planet. <laughs> Did you just add a third generic character to give me more lines? That's cheating. No, that's brilliance. These strangers landed on our ship and now are demanding to see the captain. Oh, that's going to be rough. That's what I was going to tell them, but they talk a lot. Well, mostly JL and Chris, since apparently in this scene I mostly just stand here in a blue Star Trek outfit with chicken wire Spock ears. You know, it works. And maybe if we weren't audio only. Guys, focus. Tell us, red shirts, why is it going to be rough? Because right now there are two captains claiming the bridge chair of this ship. Two? Yes, it's a real mess. Luckily, there are two. Not two number ones, only one number ones. Could you imagine? I could not. It's bad enough having two captains, but two number ones would be too, too many. Agreed. Well, can you take us to your two captains? I guess. Does anyone know where they're at? 
They are both on the bridge, where they always are, and their captain chairs sitting on the edge of it, one arm on the chair rest, and one eyebrow raised in determination. They are! Does that mean there are two captain's chairs right now? Yes, but there's only one number one chair. That's good. Can you imagine if there was two captain chairs and two number one chairs? Yeah, it seems like a lot of chairs. You're darn tootin' it is. So, uh, can we go to the bridge? Do we need to bring our own chairs, perhaps? A wise guy, are you? Do you work in engineering? No, I'm a pilot. Oh, a pilot. All fancy, are ya? I would say so. I got these pilot wings pinned to my shirt right here. We don't, we don't really have uniforms. You don't have uniforms? How do you know who does what? Well, there's only three of us, so... Only three of you? If this guy is the pilot, what are you? I'm the captain. And the woman is the science officer? No, I'm the ship's mourner. Really? We actually need one of those. Yes. I was just saying that the other day. Too many funerals and not enough mourners. You guys have a uh, uh, lot of funerals here? Oh, yes. This planet's mostly made up of red shirts, if you hadn't noticed. Oh, we noticed. Don't understand why the color of your shirt dictates your survival rate. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Did you guys hear that? I sure did. What, <laughs> what planet are you from? Earth X. Well, Earth X must be a silly place. It is, but I still don't understand. Sabrina, we just went over it. The Red Shirt crew members usually do not make it back to the ship after they were beamed down to the planet. Sometimes we don't make it being beamed back to the ship either. Transporter malfunction can be a bitch on your molecules. Also, never try to beam with a fly in the transporter either. What? Nothing. Brundle fly. Say, uh, who decides who gets beamed? The captain! Or right now, captains! You guys don't get a say in who gets beamed? No, we don't even get an opening or closing credit. We are expendable. Very expendable. Extremely expendable. Yeah, we know. We've seen the show. Show? Remember, this is a reality for them. And currently for us as well. Show? (laughs) Uh, We meant documentary? You mean documentary? (laughs) We watched a documentary on Netflix. They probably don't have Netflix. We have Netflix. Yeah, what planet doesn't have Netflix? You can probably get to our Netflix through a VPN from your planet if you want. Cool. Why don't we try to talk to the captain or captains and see if he knows if Laura's here or not. Okay, follow us. Follow me. Phaser set to stun. Phaser set to stun. Whoa there, cowboys. Specifically, uh... Number three there. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. We don't need phasers. These people seem harmless. And dare I say it, clueless. Besides, one of them is wearing a uniform. Tell that to the Tribbles. I don't know why you always draw your phaser. What if a bear comes by? Have you ever thought of that? When is the last time you have seen a bear on the ship? I have never seen a bear. Doesn't mean that they can't come by. Bears can come by, you know. Enough already. You three, follow us. Okay, we are here at the bridge. Why do you have a bridge? You know, this is a planet, not a ship, right? We don't know that. The bridge is where the captain's chair is. Now two captain chairs. Right, but only one number one chair. You guys already went over that. I want to see the bridge. Okay. Who is coming onto my bridge? Announce yourself. No. Who is coming on my bridge? Announce yourself. It's too late. I have already claimed it. My bridge. You can claim whatever you want, old man. But I'm the one true captain of this bridge. No. I am the true captain. I'm James C. Kirk. Space, a uh, final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Oh, can it already? My dad was the captain of a starship for eight minutes and saved over 8,000 lives, including my own. 
That is why I am the true captain of this reboot. Reboot? Why, you little punk? So, do you want us to announce ourselves or not? Yes. Of course. Okay, I'm Christopher DeVos from Earth X. Perhaps you've heard of me? Nope. Can't say that I have. Weird. I have an IMDB credit and everything. What? I. M. D. B. Sounds like an evil alien race. We must fight! I agree. Send 300 red shirts to go fight this IMDB. No. Send 500 red shirts to fight this I. M. D. B. Oh, I think 300 is more than enough. Do not question me. Spock. Do you think it's going to be Leonard Nimoy, Spock, or Zachary Quinto, Spock? Oh, it's got to be Nimoy. He's the easier one to impersonate. True, but I'll still mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Captain. See? Pay up. We, we didn't bet. Send 500 red shirts to fight the IMDB threat. Captain, we are running low on red shirts. How is that possible? You two, um, captains... Just keep sending our crew off to get slaughtered. It's highly illogical. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think I understand. You see, the one captain was inspired by William Shatner, and the other captain was inspired by Chris Pine. Okay. I know Pine and Shatner both played Captain Kirk at some point. Shatner on TV in the original series, and Pine in the J.J. Abrams reboot. Was that before or after the Star Wars debacle? Before. Everyone, brace yourselves. We're about to get hit by a photon torpedo. Oh, no. Are we going to die? Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) Probably not. Just stand here. We'll be fine. But he just said we were about to get hit by a torpedo. It's It's a photon torpedo. We'll be okay. How do you know? Just watch. Impact in five, four, three, two, one. To simulate being hit by a torpedo. Classic Star Trek. Yeah. I never noticed the cameraman over there until now. Why is he filming at an angle? Classic Star Trek. Is that all you're going to say? Yeah, it pretty much sums up what you're seeing right now. Scotty, damage report. Captain, the engines can't take much more. There's only one solution to get us out of this mess. I agree. And I believe we are thinking... The same thing. We are. We must make out with a hot alien woman. Spock! Have engineering team beam us up some hot alien women to make out with. Pronto. Captain, that seems highly illogical. I'll volunteer. That way you only have to beam up one. I'll take that one then. Chris Pinekirk, you are on your own. Gee, thanks a lot. I'll find my own woman then. A Wonder Woman. Are you sure you want to do that, Sabrina? If it will save the ship, yes. Well, at least you not forget we're not on a ship. We're on a planet. They only think we're on a spaceship. If it gets to finding Laura, then I'll do it. I don't think that'll get us to finding Laura any faster. Listen, when a girl has been in space this long, she gets urges. Well, we've only been in space for two episodes. Enough talk. Let's... The mega scene begin. It's working, Captain. Even at half make out power. Scotty, where's the other girl? Hey, Chris, why don't you put on a wig and make out with uh, Chris Pinekirk? Hey, joke's on you, JL. According to Snapchat, I make a pretty hot girl. <laughs> yeah, you probably should not <laughs> tell that to the world. The ship has been stabilized. We are all saved! You are welcome. I still can't believe we did it on half make-out power. When you make out with me, it's powerful. Can we uh, get back on track here and maybe find Laura? Laura, did you say Laura? Yeah, have you seen her? The sleepy one. That's her! Did she try to book a cruise here? Oddly, yes. We are looking for her. She got lost amongst all these different planets of Earth. Different planets of Earth? Chris, 
They don't realize they're on a version of Earth and not the real Earth. Or any Earth. Where are we again? Tiberius! Sorry, I meant she should be here somewhere on Tiberius. Um, your spaceship. She was. Great! Where? Well, I said was, meaning she was here. Took a nap. Got mad that we don't offer any cruises or discounts on cruises or drink packages. And then she left. Yeah, sounds about right. Any idea where she went? No, but I can send some red shirts out to find her. If you would think that would help. Oh, it wouldn't hurt. Agreed. Yes, please. No problem. Scotty, can you beam some red shirts down to the planet of... The entire ground is nothing but molten lava. That's a wordy name for a planet. Um, maybe you guys shouldn't. Where are the red shirts going to land if the entire ground is made of nothing but molten lava? Oh, they'll figure it out. Scotty, beam about 500,000 red shirts there on my mark. And Mark. Captain, they're all dead. Oh, my. <laughs> well, she must not be there, then. Shall we try another planet? Oh, God, no. Yes. How about the planet of giant poison spear-throwing apes and tutus? She could be there. I don't think she's there. Scotty, beam down 7,000 red shirts to the planet of giant poison spear-throwing apes and tutus. Man, those apes know how to wear a tutu. That doesn't seem quite important right now. I'm going to need more high lie. Not now. Is there any less dangerous planets you could check? Well, let's see. There is the planet of nothing but dairy to eat. That sounds pretty tame. Unless you're lactose intolerant, <laughs> Chris. But it couldn't be that bad, Chris. Let's check there, Chris. JL Sabrina. JL Sabrina. <laughs> the whole damn show. <laughs> <laughs> Most deadly planet of all. <laughs> I'm not going down on that planet. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Yeah, Fuzzy. wait till she's drinking and then say it. <laughs> oh my god. Scotty, send down 2,000 red shirts to the planet. Nothing but dairy to eat. Captain, we're running out of men. I only have lactose intolerant red shirts left. It. Should be okay. Beam them down. girl yeah that was pretty predictable and unsuccessful scotty how many red shirts do we have left six captain good news we still have six any other planets you want to check no how about the planet of never send less than seven people to explore yes i almost forgot about that planet good call she has to be there. You didn't want to send some more people than just those six, then. Why 
It's the red shirt's job to explore and die. Right. I get that. But the name of the planet suggests we may want to send a main character who doesn't ever die down with them. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Pinekirk, you should go. Me? Why me? Because you're the captain. Plus, you are wearing a yellow shirt. And the main, main character. You'll be fine. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. Okay, I'll take the six red shirts with me to the planet of never send less than seven people. I will find the missing Laura, and I will be the hero. Scotty, beam the six red shirts and the young Captain Kirk down. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain, the transporter is broken. Oh, no. How will we ever get the young Captain Kirk back? I can have it fixed in like five minutes. No, it's probably broken forever don't bother what a bad day we have lost all these red shirts and uh chris pine yes and young captain kirk i'll just have to captain this ship all by myself planet and we're no closer to finding laura so with most of the population of your planet ship sure I'll play along. Ship wiped out? Aren't you vulnerable to attack from, mm, I don't know, the Romulans, the Borg, the Klingons, Khan, or maybe Q? The guy from Impractical Jokers? Yep, that guy. Oh, that's weird. He always seems so nice. My favorite Joker is good old Murr. But you are right. We are going to have to get more crew members. Somehow. Just a suggestion, but maybe you should needlessly send them off to slaughter in such high numbers. And how many people are in your crew? Uh, including me? Yes. Three. When you get a bigger crew, you can then tell me how to run my ship. I'll leave it to men to always be comparing crew sizes. I don't think that's a thing. Well... It was a thing today. None of that is helping me with my current situation. I need more red shirts. I can't send blue and yellow shirts down to planets to fight. Who is going to attend to all these blinking buttons? He has a point. Does he? Listen, that's my boo. We made out. Yeah, we saw. We didn't want to see, but we saw. None of this banter is going to help me solve my lack of redshirt problem. You may need to recruit people from other planets. Recruit people. That has never been done before. But how? Well, you could try putting up recruitment posters and stuff. Recruitment posters? Yeah, you know, the ones with the little hangy things on the bottom with your phone number on it. Do you have an office depot on this planet? You can make them there. Or, you know, just like a home printer would work. Oh, that's true. But you want them to look more professional. Will these recruitment posters get me my red shirts today? No. Think of this more like a long-term strategy thing. That's not going to work. I need them today, if not sooner. Well, it just so happens that I'm a professional mourner. So you are all in luck. I don't understand how that's going to help. Yeah, what are you going to do? Cry until everyone joins? No. All I need is a microphone that can reach everywhere you are trying to recruit. I have an intercom system. Will that do? That'll do. Pig. Did you just call me a pig? Not. Cool man. No, I was quoting babe. Oh, did you just call me a babe? That's nice. But I don't think Laura would appreciate it. I I wasn't. I was quoting the movie, babe. So I'm not a babe? Rude. Jail, help me. (laughs) No, 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 no. This is more fun to watch. Besides, I'm not as stupid as a sheep. Thanks, buddy. Watch me drink my beer. So, you were saying you had an intercom system? How far does that reach? Well, only 
to the ship, planet. We're going to need a bigger boost than that. Maybe our ship can help. You have your own planet. No, it's an actual ship. Ship! Yes, hello. What do you want, J.O.? I was just about to play some gin rummy with the other AIs. Yeah, you're interrupting, and this is my only line. We need to boost the signal on this intercom system to broadcast to the nearby planets. Can you do that? I can do that if the system has a USB port. Is the uh, intercom USB? I think so. Do you mean this small rectangle thingy that I plug into? That's it! I always try to put it in upside down first. Why can't it just be the same on both sides? That is the question of a lifetime. Ship, the intercom is USB. Okay, good. Just plug it in and I'll do the rest. Crap, I put it in upside down again. Hold on. Okay, it's correct now. Now what? Now. Let the professional mourner do her job. Hand me the intercom. I'm about to funeral speech. Eulogy. Here you go. People of the surrounding world, hear my plea. Although we have never asked anything of you before. That's not entirely true. We ask for things on a daily basis. Okay. Even though we ask for things on a daily basis... We are asking one more time. Our planet! Ship, can you stop interrupting so we can get through this? Sorry. We ask one more time for your support and your people. Our people are dying. Well, they're actually all dead. Like, really dead. Like, basically slaughtered. But we need your people to come join our people and help stop the endless struggle that plagues our galaxies. Come join us in the fight for truth, justice, and the American way. To not only better us, but to better yourselves as well. What am I talking about? I don't know. What is in it for you? A free shirt. So remember... Ask not what you can do, but ask what you can wear. And I say to you, everyone looks good in red! Yeah, none of that made any sense. But yet, it's working. The communicators are buzzing. People are signing up. To wear red shirts. Well, I hope that will be a lesson to you to not waste so many lives on fruitless adventures. Captain, there is a planet of humanoid toad people with machine guns that we haven't checked out yet. How many red shirts have joined so far? It looks like about 2,000. Beam them all down to that planet immediately. Some people will never learn. Oh, about... Your wife. Yes. She mentioned something about boxing gloves before she left and possibly getting a face tattoo. I don't know what she was talking about. It might be clues as to where she was heading. Maybe we should get back to the ship. Yes. Bye. Good luck. You're welcome. Gong. Chip, is there any Earth clones nearby that might be into boxing and face tattoos? Oh, uh, well, uh oh. You just kind of asked me out of the blue. Do you give me a type of head up at all? You, know, you need to give me a minute to do some calculations and crap. Yeah, that's fine. There's no pressure. Yeah, I feel like there's pressure. No, there's no pressure. Uh, okay, I'm good. Uh, well, uh, pressure. Just just do your best. Oh, yeah, I don't do my best every time. Uh, you say I'll do my best at everything? I whoop, I whoop, I do 100% of all things. Oh, my gosh. Jail, can you talk to him? Ship, you are the Italian stallion. 
there is not one action hero that can outmuscle your box office reign. Oh, uh, there you go. Uh, I thought so too. So ignore Chris. It's time for his nap anyway. Why? Because you're old. I- I'm not that old. See? Grumpy? There are some hard caramels over there if you need them. Ooh, I do like caramels. Uh, I'm about to lay down the old rambled slambo if Chris is not careful. Any clues on the next planet? Uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. You know, he's gonna be happy. You know, I know. I know. Ramble, ramble. Right? What? Nothing. <laughs> it looks like we should just head to the planet Punch Out. Punch Out? Yeah, that's what he said. It's about three weeks away. Ah, that's a long time. Maybe you could take up a hobby in the meantime to keep yourself busy. Like paranormal investigation. I was thinking more like jigsaw puzzles. Paranormal jigsaw puzzle investigation. Yep. Oh, God. Hopefully we find Laura on Planet Punch-Out. Hopefully. It sounds dangerous, though. Yeah, it does. Just don't wear a red shirt. You know what else is dangerous? Haunted jigsaw puzzles? Yes. Never, ever, ever try to glue together a haunted jigsaw puzzle. It will curse your family for centuries. Especially Springbok ones. Good to know. Jail, set us on a course for Planet Punch-Out. Engage! Podcast 42 is performed by Christopher DeVos, J.L. Tros, Laura DeVos, and Sabrina Pierre. All celebrity voices are impersonated poorly in this particular episode. All information given may or may not be true. Sound design by P42 Incorporated and is recorded in the Podcast 42 studios. Spock, Chris Pine, and Red Shirt Number 2 was performed by Christopher DeVos. Shatner and Red Shirt Number One was performed by JL Truss. Scotty and Red Shirt Number Three was performed by Sabrina Pierre. Logo by Q Panda. Find Q Panda on Facebook for commissions. E music by Cremo. Find more music by Cremo on Cremo.net. Podcast 42 is a proud member of the Podfix Network. This has been a transmission of the Podfix Network. For more about this show and other great Podfix programs, go to podfixnetwork.com.